Hello. All right. It's 12.46 p.m. July 24th, 2018. Charleston, South Carolina. A.D. Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. Sorry, how far am I going to take that? Okay. I like to just give the date just uh, since we're dealing with time here. Um, I got that idea from Chris Brennan. Chris Brennan's a pretty cool Western astrologer. I like him a lot. He leaves the time and the date of, you know, every video he makes. And, hey, why aren't we all doing that? Because we're all astrologers. We're all dealing with time. And, you know, if you're really good, if you read that time and date, you might be able to pause this and guess ahead of time what I'm going to talk about, right? I don't know. just seems like a good thing to do. So that's why I do it. So, uh, so what book am I going to give a book review of? You know, it's going to be some cool Vedic Shastra, some ancient text that you can't read until you're super enlightened. No, it's just the Bible. Plain old-fashioned holy Bible. This is quite a good book. The good book, as we call it in the West. You know, I grew up in a Christian family, but they never really, like, pushed it on me. Like, I was never really forced to go to church. And I think that actually helped. I think that here in the Bible Belt, most people were, like, forced into this thing that no one understood and that's why it didn't really stick and get popularity but if you're actually into esoteric things and into the occult there is like a lot of really fruitful wisdom in here or if you're just into spirituality then there's a ton of ton of powerful spirituality in this book um yeah the old testament's kind of confusing and full of a bunch of crazy old rules and stuff but there's actually a lot of astrological wisdom like hidden symbolically like hidden in this book because the you know the learned people of the day you know, the learned people of the of that time you know you didn't have television or all this other stuff you had astrology and you had the mythologies of the different cultures so you know most pretty much all the learned people of this day and age knew astrology and so they were speaking in astrological terms <clears throat> and even Jesus was and so it's kind of cool when you learn about you know the water bearer and then you, when you know they ask when Jesus you know is asked like when will I return how will we know he's like see a man carrying a water pot into the next house follow him in there you know how do you not see that as being astrologically symbolic I'm not going to go into what all that means in this video but yeah, there's there's a ton of astrological symbolism. Um, definitely read the the New Testament, which is much shorter. If you're going to read any part of it, the words of Jesus, you can even get the versions where the words of Jesus are like in red and stuff, you know. And yeah, um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful book. And it's kind of weird that a lot of people in my Western culture aren't even familiar with it at all. You know what I mean? Who get into yoga? into astrology all these things um, I don't know like to me all these things help you become more wise and be able to think for yourself and so then you can entertain any kind of philosophy or idea at least a little bit doesn't mean that that's what you want to completely adhere to for the rest of your life maybe but you can still entertain it and so I would like to see more people just be familiar with the Bible in my um, current culture and I do think that it's kind of weird I come from an extremely more activist liberal background but I do think it's kind of weird how like our culture in America is so against um, Christianity or religion in any way uh, even when it's just people trying to be good people and trying to improve themselves they like people just are really quick to bash Christianity now in this modern intellectual world and they've never even read this actual book and they wouldn't understand it like I can make I can make references to this book like oh you know pearls before swine that's a reference that goes back to the Bible where Jesus told his disciples you know don't give your pearls to the swine saying don't bother trying to teach or share this beautiful love for God that you have found with me through my grace, don't bother sharing that with worldly people, with the Pharisees, with politicians, with people that are just immersed in that world. Um, you know, I've used that advice and it's helped me a lot in my life and that's actually a very Jupiterian advice, um, very good advice to give. But it's funny because you could like say that, I could say that in intellectual circles and some people won't even like more like those young people like 25 20 year old people who have just been to college and think they're really smart but actually have like no experience of the world um, they won't even get 
get those references and they won't even get how much wisdom is in this book. So it's a good book. I give it, uh, you know, I give it five out of five stars, even though, you know, it is, it does have its translation errors and, you know, the, the King James, you know, there's all these different versions. And so I'm sure we've lost a lot of great wisdom with that. And in general, Western culture, I wish it I wish it did, but it doesn't have the occult foundation that Indian culture has. It just plain doesn't. And so that's why I'm a Vedic astrologer and not a Western astrologer, also because I'm a yogi. But uh, Indian culture has the largest cultural continuity of anyone, and so they have the most wisdom preserved, in my opinion. doesn't mean maybe there were older tribes in Africa, of course, but they were invaded, got taken over, lost their knowledge. They didn't have this cultural continuity. Um, particularly up in the Himalayas, you know, Alexander the Great couldn't get there. No one could get there. So they were able to keep doing things for a long time. And that's very important. All right. Thanks, you guys. Take care.